Since 9-11, under just one program, police have taken two and a half billion dollars in the course of over 61,000 seizures of cash alone from people who, and this is the mind-blowing part, were not charged with a crime. Senator, talk to us a little bit about another project you're working on. Um, it, it, it has to do with civil forfeiture. Tell us what that, what that is. Well, basically, the government can take money from you without ever convicting you, without ever even charging you. If police suspect that you committed a crime, they can arrest you and put you on trial. At that trial, prosecutors must prove you are guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. But if police suspect your car was involved in a crime, they can take it, sell it, and in most places, pocket the proceeds to pad their budgets. They need not prove you committed any crime or even arrest you to take your property away. In fact, the most famous U.S. attorney for doing this is Loretta Lynch. She confiscated $110 million worth of people's stuff, never tried them, never even took them to court, just kept their money. And it turns justice on its head because you're presumed to be guilty until you prove that you're innocent. That's right. You can lose your property and money even if you haven't done anything wrong. It's a very powerful tool to seize the assets of, of a citizen. But we also know that the way this really came about was, you know, a lot of folks using that money in, in connection with drug dealing and that type of thing. And we got to be very careful about being able to make sure that they don't profit from that type of activity. A couple weeks ago in Philadelphia, a teenage son was selling $40 worth of illegal drugs out of the house. They confiscated the house and kicked the family out. How is this helping a, fo a family that's struggling with a teenager who's on drugs to take their house from them? Right. It's crazy and it ought to stop. With civil forfeiture, your property is guilty until you prove it innocent to get it back. And because most state and federal laws allow police and prosecutors to pocket the proceeds, they have a big incentive to pursue profits, not justice. How big? In 1986, the Justice Department's forfeiture fund took in $94 million. Now. It has more than a billion. Motel Caswell, 2011, government tried to seize family's property, uh, claiming that some drug incidents happened within the motel, but the motel owners, their property was seized? Yeah, a million and a half dollar motel, and over a 14 year period, over 200,000 people stayed in the motel, and I think they accused about six or 10 of actually selling drugs out of the motel, not, you know, under the permission of the motel, and then they take the motel. One of the reasons they took the motel, even though there are other motels in the area that had the same problem, they took this motel because it was paid for and they can keep all the proceeds. If police decide your money is suspicious, they can take that too. In another case, Victor uh, Ramos Guzman in 2011 stopped for speeding, not given a ticket, but the, the $28,500 in cash in his car was seized. Tell us about that. Well, he was taking the money from uh, to his church. It was from one church to the head church in another town a couple hours away. No one ever accused him of being related to the drug trade or of getting this money illegally. But it shouldn't be the onus on him to prove that he's innocent. The government should have to prove that you're guilty before they take your stuff. This is going on all the time. And when the Washington Post looked at it last year, a disproportionate amount of the people were poor, black, or Hispanic. And so this is another evidence of the war on drugs not being racist on purpose, but inadvertently having a racial outcome. And we ought to be very conscious of this because the people who are affected by it are very conscious of it. Law enforcement gets to keep and use this suspicious money to pad their budgets. But wouldn't all money look suspicious if you could buy a break room margarita machine with it? Like, how do you decide forfeiture funds? You know, it's usually based on a need. Um, well, I'll take that back. Discretion, though, I'd imagine you, you sign off on. Yeah, it's, there's some limitations on it. You know, it's um, actually there's not really on the forfeiture stuff. It's, it's, we just usually base it on something that would be nice to have. When you say they take the money, um, remember something, that making those type of deposits under $10,000 um, repeatedly and not reporting that activity um, to the government is, has, has, has been codified um, against the law. And so, you know, part of the problem here is that, you know, when you take money from a civil office at forfeiture perspective, let's talk about the federal side of things. When the IRS takes that money, they don't get to keep the money unless they prove that you, in fact, did do something wrong. And that often becomes part of a negotiation in a plea agreement on a criminal side 
or if you've uh, violated the civil laws, uh, something that was part of a settlement. Mm -hmm. Most people who've lost stuff to civil forfeiture just choose to walk away rather than fight. We did that many times in the U.S. Attorney's Office, and I'm comfortable with the tool being available. It's kind of like pennies from heaven, you know, it gets you a, a toy or something that you need, is, is the way we typically look at it. And Senator, you had the president's ear, and what was his response to this? The president is interested in doing something in this, but it's funny how the president will come forward and say he's interested in doing something, but then he appointed Loretta Lynch, who's actually opposed.